Hi folks, it's Richard from Inclusive Driving. I'm going to talk about approach speed to roundabouts today. A common concept that is taught when we're teaching learners to approach roundabouts is the idea that we should plan to go but be prepared to stop. I'm not a big fan of that idea. To me, that suggests that planning to go, your approach speed is going to be higher than necessary. And when we say be prepared to stop, that feels like stopping is a backup plan that might be executed at the last minute. And we've got to be very careful about sudden braking on approach to roundabouts because of the impact on the traffic behind. In my opinion, a much better approach is to totally turn that around, where we say, plan to stop, but at any point on the way, we can choose to continue if we've got enough visual information. Now note, when I say plan to stop, that doesn't mean plan to stop and definitely stop, because we do want to keep moving if we can. That's the idea of roundabouts, it's to keep traffic moving. But by saying plan to stop, I find that the braking on approach to the roundabout is much smoother, it's more linear, it's more planned. And then at any point during that slowing down process, if we get enough visual information and decide it's safe to carry on and emerge onto the roundabout, then we simply stop stopping and start going. We turn it around and I find that just gives a much better plan on approach to roundabouts. So I'm going to go and drive a few roundabouts with that concept in mind. We're trying to keep moving, of course. I'm not disagreeing with that. I'm just changing the mindset away from plan to go and have a backup plan of stopping and changing it to plan to stop, but be prepared that if you get enough visual information, you can take your foot off the brake and go back on the accelerator instead. Let's go and have a look at some roundabouts. So I'm going to turn left at this roundabout. I'm not going to talk about mirrors and signals, you know that. But I need to get my visual information from what's happening to the right of me. So I'm planning to stop. Now I've got enough information, I can stop stopping and start going. If it turned out that there was traffic on from my right, I would simply continue on the braking process. I would continue stopping so that ultimately I stopped at the line and I could reassess as soon as I had confirmation it was clear to go I could then continue. Let's have a look at this next roundabout where I'm going ahead second exit. So let's begin the braking process. I'm planning to stop at the roundabout. I'm assessing what's going on to the right and if I get enough information I can stop stopping and I can start going. There's my information. going ahead second exit again towards the McDonald's building I'm planning to stop at the giveaway line now the information is telling me that I need to continue stopping 
So there was no last minute panic braking there because I'd already planned to stop. I'm waiting for my visual information that tells me I can go again. There's my information. going ahead second exit on the next roundabout this one is controlled by traffic lights so that almost makes the decision for us the traffic light has just turned red so I'm planning to stop at the stop line Next roundabout, I'm going to turn right and take the second exit. Putting my plan into action here. I'm planning to stop. I can't see anything to the right yet, so I'm continuing to slow, planning to stop. Where's my visual information? There it is. So then I can stop stopping and start going. Exit one. Exit two. I'm going to turn left first exit on the next roundabout. Exactly the same principle. At the moment I'm planning to stop behind the blue car. Otherwise I'm planning to stop at the roundabout. Let's look at where we get the information. There it is, it's clear. Stop stopping and start going. This same concept applies at any point where we would give way to traffic. So turning left or right at the end of a road, turning right across oncoming traffic, let's turn right at the end of this road. I'm going to go extra slow this time just so that you can see the point at which we can make our decision. So this is what we would traditionally call a closed junction because we can't see round it from a distance. But where's the point I have to get to before I can see clearly? Well it's actually a little bit over the giveaway line, it's here. This is the point where I can make my decision. The closer we have to get to the giveaway line before we can decide, the slower we need to be going when we get to the giveaway line. So to my mind, it makes no sense to get learners thinking about deciding on an approach speed to a junction when they can't see the status of that junction. I don't think there's any value in getting learners to look at a junction from a distance and decide can I approach that at 15 miles an hour? Can I approach it at 10 miles an hour? 
do I have to go slower? I think it's much better to plan to stop at the giveaway line and at any point if we've got the information we need we then come off the brake and go back on the accelerator. Putting that into practice with a right turn emerging. Put yourself an imaginary giveaway line at the point where you would stop if there was oncoming traffic. Plan to stop at that point, but then we can stop stopping and start going as soon as we've got enough visual information to decide. And this method also works when we're going through narrow sections of road with parked cars. You don't have to decide from a distance how much to slow down or whether you can even get through that parked car. We plan to stop and as soon as we get enough information we stop stopping and start going. Well I hope that's been a useful video to you. It's a little insight into one of the methods that I use when I'm teaching learners which is maybe a little bit different to how you've been taught or if you're an instructor, how you teach. So thanks for watching and I'll see you on another video very soon.